Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for the uh, invitation. Uh, like it was said, uh, I am leading the data science team in one of the banks, and today I would like to share with you some of my experience and some of my thoughts about the data science and artificial intelligence. Uh, there will be no mathematical formulas, so please relax yourself, and it will be nice and easy, I hope. Okay. Uh, Let's start with some warm-up. Uh, let's consider the following question. How to convince others that I'm a good driver? Especially for you, young drivers. Probably we have some young drivers on, the, uh, on this venue. How many young drivers? So drivers who has driving license less than 12 months is on the, uh, on the venue. Please don't be shy. OK. Okay, so stay focused because this might be some, practic some practical thing for you, okay? So, we have general information about our example person, Janek Kowalski. He is 19 years old. He has driving license for 10 months, 10,000 kilometers driven, no accidents, no fines. Who thinks that Janek is a good driver? Please, raise your hand. Okay. So the following question is, OK, this is the general information, but how to figure out that Janek is a good driver without getting into the car with him? We can look, we can look at his social media. So this is the Instagram post <laughs> from Janek's profile. Okay? For those who, who cannot see from the end of the, of the room, this is 220 kilometers per hour. We don't know if it is Janek's picture or he just posted someone else's picture. But let's look at uh, Janek's friend's Twitter. <laughs> so he really appreciates Janek. I don't know if Janek is uh, really thankful for this. But we can see that we have two pictures of the same person. Okay. And uh, as you can see, this information on my left-hand side has not been available before. Now it's more and more available. And this site represents the traditional data sources, the traditional information we are basing our decision-making process. Okay? And the thing here, this is something new, and we call it behavioral information and in business, in uh, different applications of the data science, we know that the behaviors are much stronger predictor of people's behavior than the general information, okay? And the same issue we have in the bank. When we are, when we are about to grant somebody a money, we would like to know that the money will come back to us, okay? And we know that the income statement some static information is something totally different than people's behavior on the current account. How much money is flowing into the account, how much money is outflowing on the, uh, from the account, how often, how frequent. And the second thing, we have information behavioral from Credit Bureau when we have the exact statistics, how many times somebody forget to pay the installment and how many times somebody forget to pay the loan at all. Okay? And the new data sources are changing our world. And based on that, we have a new business models which are based on personalized content. So what is personalized content? So these are the services you probably all know, which are based on a recommendation based on your behavior. So let's take Netflix. When you are launching your account, you are pointing out your favorite movies, okay? But that's not all, because during the time when we are watching different movies, Netflix algorithm is learning your behavior, is learning things you like, you don't like, and is trying to predict what will be the best, next best movie you would like to see. And this is the dynamic information you are providing by yourself. The same is with YouTube, the same is with Spotify, and this is just the beginning. Imagine the virtual assistant after the hard day at work 
or even, or I don't know, even breaking up with your boyfriend or girlfriend, you are driving home and your virtual assistant is putting some cheering up music for you. Choosing for you just to feel better, okay? And the same tendency we have in finance. So everybody wants to have his financing offer, banking services, just to be fit for their needs. So previously, customer entered the bank and asked for a loan. And this traditional model still exists in the banks. But now the situation is changing. The younger generation has this very, very simple assumption. If I'm your active customer, I want this offer to be ready before I even ask. Because I don't know when I will need the money. I don't want to go to the branch. I just want to log on myself and have the money prepared for me. Okay? So, how it is possible? It is possible, among others, thanks to the data science. And data science, what is data science? So, it's data information and solution. So the data science is deriving information from data and then putting this information into the context to solve the problem or bring some new functionality. And the relation is, this is the only one mathematical formula I have here, okay? that data is not the same as uh, what is information. I'll give you the example. Your data is 10,000 emails from your users of your service, customers. Information is the main message in these emails. In order to get this message, you would have to read 10,000 emails just to figure out that your website is bad, boring, counterintuitive. Okay? Data science helps you do it in, within the seconds. And then you need to use this information to prepare a solution for your user. So how it is done? First of all, we have data exploration. So data exploration, this is the phase where you have all this data and you're trying to dig in to find something interesting. So we have some basic information, how many users, how often, boring classical stuff. But we have some new stuff. And if you are data science, first of all, you can learn how to read using computer. So my example, how to read 10,000 emails within less than 30 seconds. That's the first thing. Second thing, you can learn how to hear and write what you have heard. And probably you all know it, that you can talk, talk to your smartphone and it will change it to the text, okay? Easy stuff. And then you can also learn how to identify objects and do something with these objects. Imagine that you would like to have a service that you would like to help people sell the things. So would you like to, for example, you would like to sell the bicycle. So you are taking the picture of the bicycle. The computer understands that on this picture we have bicycle. This is the city bicycle for an adult and have the brand of the bicycle. It connects to the database, searches the similar offers and gives you the information. Okay, you can sell this bicycle for at least this kind of money, okay? So that's the stuff which is the, the, the first part of the uh, data scientist job. Then it seems easy, but it is the hardest part, visualization and storytelling. So you need to sell the information. So you need to convince somebody that actually you actually read this 10,000 emails, okay? And that this information is useful for you. And the thing here that you uh, first of all, have to verify if this information is useful for your content, okay? For the context you are, uh, you are working on. This is the first thing. The second thing, you need to learn how to draw and paint very simple charts to make this information available for the user. Because the majority of the data scientists, unfortunately, has this tendency to be really passionate about the data exploration, and they are trying to tell all the story about the exploration to the end user. And very often the end user is not interested at all at this story. So this is the tough part. You have to learn how to make your long story short, not to kill somebody with the formulas, 
and queries to the database before you reach to the happy end of your story. Okay. Then we have prediction. So the things that mathematicians love the most. So how to take all this information to predict, for example, what will be the best, next best song you would like to hear? What would be the next best movie you would like to see? Or, or what is the probability that this person will repay the loan? Okay? Or what is the probability that this person is a good driver? Okay? And here we have classical modeling, machine learning, deep learning, and all the stuff about it. Last but not least is experimenting. The data science doesn't end up here. So once we have some hypothesis, once we have some prediction, we need to test it. So first of all, we need to design the test, how to verify that our solution is actually predicting what it was supposed to predict. Okay? So we have to know what kind of questions you would like to answer, not exactly asking the end user. Then we have to implement it, so simply speaking, making it work. And then we need to figure out how to get the end user feedback. And this can be my 10,000 emails. So once I have this fed feedback, I need to go back there. So this is never-ending story. It's the circle. You're analyzing the data, receiving information, prepare the solution, taking the solution to the users, they are either using it or not, and then come back. And one important thing, data science is always part of the story. Uh, there is a lot of hype about the art artificial intelligence, data science, machine learning, and uh, there is a group of people who think that that's all you need. That's not true. If you have a good customer story, even without data science on board, you will probably succeed because your story is good. If you have only data science solution and you do not have a good customer story, you will fail. AI and data science won't invent the customer or user story instead of you. And it's a crucial thing in this business. OK, so how to start with that? The entry barrier actually is not really high. First of all, all the knowledge about it is open sourcely available in the Internet. So if you would like to start whatever advanced level in mathematics you are, you can start by running some trainings on edX or Coursera. Some of them are for free, and you can start with that. Then, if you need the data to play around, there are portals where you can just download open data sets and play around with the things you have learned. In terms of the software, majority of the software is open source. So R, Python, you can download it and play around with that. And the hardware, first good message is, if you have a good computer with good graphical cards, card, it's more than enough. Deep learning is done on the graphical cards. So your home computer with uh, regular graphical card is a very powerful analyzing tool. If you exceed possibilities of your home computer, you can always move to the cloud, and then the only limitation is the size of your wallet. Okay? So more or less, that's the whole story. I encourage you to just try to play around with data science. It's a really fascinating thing because you can discover the world, the things, the connections you have never thought that they are actually existing. And uh, in the top 10 professions of the future, data scientist is there. So I highly recommend you to try to play around with that. Thank you very much.